I'm calling the shots. Guess who be running the show? Fuck with me though, making me feel like the bad guy. All right. Well, this time we're actually going to dive into the black arts of tuning a drive-by wire throttle body. This is something that a lot of tuners, a lot of people will completely misunderstand and forget um, basic principles of an engine, how it operates. So, I mean, <laughs> without making people sound really bad with this or ever pointing out who does this wrong, um, it's as simple as you don't want to simply open a throttle body. I'm pointing at one. I'm going to show you guys in a second. You don't want to open a throttle body too quickly. And that's because of the way the engine operates. Uh, you know, there, it's pulling vacuum. And as such, when you have a charge of air going in, which is under pressure and it's a recharge application, it's easier to overly open the throttle body and create a dip in the vacuum. Now you're going to positive pressure or going to atmospheric pressure and it slows the charge air so quickly that instead of revving the engine optimis, optimized up to its fastest pace, you've now drowned it with air essentially. Um, and there's a whole balance of this pressure wave in front and behind the throttle body to where when you want to set engine to where it's happiest you don't just go closed throttle blade wide open throttle blade that's never going to be the best solution so you want to take a throttle curve and i'll show you guys kind of what i mean so all right so if we go here we are looking at a ls3 drive by wire throttle body Okay, a lot of people would say, wow, it looks like it's, it's open, it's doing this. This is by design, okay? This level of openness on this motor, this is so that in this scenario that this motor stalls out, this will be enough airflow to idle this drive-by wire. So these on average will have a roughly 30% um, opening to handle the idle control region. That means from fully closed here to 30% open will be your idle region. And I guess the, the basics really come down where people are misunderstanding is they think that the airflow opening of this region here is a linear relationship between the throttle blade opening. So if this is open, let's say this is closed, this is open 10%. Well, that's not 10% of the total airflow going through this throttle body. And if we're at 30%, that's not 30% airflow through the throttle body. This is actually a curvature based on surface area. So if you were to measure the amount of air that can get through the throttle blade when you have a 3% opening it might be 15% of the airflow of the total region when it's wide open okay and when you're at let's say 80% you might be at 95% of the total airflow of what the throttle body can flow by itself so you end up mapping this based on a surface area curvature and you base it on what makes this engine that is pulling vacuum, what makes this engine respond best with its flow. So air goes in, goes down into the engine. And our job as calibrators is to optimize Super Bowl just finished, uh, is to optimize what's going on with the engine's airflow. And if I can control that throttle blade to make it as reactive as possible, that's the goal. It's not about opening quickly. It's about making the engine match 
that pulse wave of the intake manifold and the charge air going into it. And so it's a manner of harmonics, uh, I guess port volume, and simply, like I was saying, the surface area and pressures around that throttle body. So on something like an Mtron, where you have throttle mass flow, and a modern Ford ECU, which is also throttle mass flow, um, you're having a pressure sensor on either side of the throttle body, air temperature going through for the throttle air. And um, of course, you have the, the drive-by-wire, which has your locations. So with that sort of information, you're able to use a have a Stokes equation, figure out exactly uh, a mass flow of the throttle body. And then based on the mass flow data, you're able to evaluate your surface area, your um, ideal throttle positions, and it ends up making an engine that might normally rev, let's say, from idle, let's say it's 1,000 RPM, revs to 8,000 RPM, that's a 7,000 RPM sweep. So if we have that take one second of time, that is a differential speed, a delta speed actually, a delta of 7,000 RPM per second, right? It's 8,000 minus 1,000, 7,000. Um, and that took one second, so that is 7,000 RPM per second of a change of speed, delta 7,000. If you control this throttle body correctly, that same engine might get 14,000, 21,000. And this is using the same flywheel, using the same porting. It's simply because the manner in which you're controlling the drive-by-wire is optimized on the flow of the engine to make it rev as crisp or as smooth as possible and directing that airflow when it needs it and not when it doesn't. So here's another black art, which is what I'm probably going to call the series of tuning an engine. And I can go into all the specifics, but the idea is that if you're missing these concepts of how certain things work, don't understand them at the fundamental value you can't stack on the more complex ones beyond that when you add boost into the mix when you have certain engine ports when you have crazy turbo combinations it all all plays into the same understanding the basics and building from your fundamentals of efi so hope that helps and uh I'm really tired of seeing it wrong, so I figured, you know, for the 200 people that are going to watch this video, hey, hope it helped. For everyone else, <laughs> oh well, <laughs> sorry. So, catch you guys in the next one, and uh, cheers, y'all. See ya. Calling the shots, guess who be running the show? Fuck with me though, making me feel like the bad guy.